All right, let's look at one final application here in section 1.6. Uh, this one has to do with analyzing network traffic. Uh, I think the example in your book uh, actually talks about cars going in and out of intersections on a network of streets, but obviously uh, another practical application would be packet flow over a computer network, or I'm sure there's lots of other networks that you can think of. Uh, so this is a small simplified network uh, there are four different nodes, A, B, C, and D. There's some known uh, flow rates here. And if you were truly thinking of uh, tra cars driving on city streets, this might be where they have the little, uh, I don't know what you call them, those little uh, hoses that they lay down on the road that count how many cars go through. Um, and then they've got some other places where they don't know. Um, but the simple rule here for setting up these equations um, is uh, for each node, obviously. Uh, the amount that's flowing in equals the amount that's flowing out. Assuming that no car gets stalled in the middle, middle of the intersection and is waiting for the tow truck and everybody's yelling at the driver because it's their fault that they got stuck in the middle of the intersection. But assuming that's not happening, uh, the flow in has to equal the flow out. And then it's, this one's nice. You can actually kind of jump straight to writing down the linear equations. Um, just starting with the first node with A. Say, so what's the flow into that one? Uh, looks like just 200. Which has to equal the flow out of that, which is x1 plus x2. Uh, node B. The flow in is x1. And the flow out is 40 plus x3. Uh, let's see node C. Flow in is x2 and 3. And the flow out is x5 plus 100. And finally, node D, uh, the input is x4 plus x5. And the outflow is just 60. Uh, sometimes with a network, you get one more equation from saying the total amount entering the network is the same as the total amount leaving the network. Um, like, uh, for instance, in this one, you'd say the total amount coming into the network from this you know, unlabeled node up here uh, is 200. And the total amounts leaving at these unlabeled nodes is 40, 60, 100, is also 200. Uh, so really, coming into the network is 200, going out of the network is 200. Uh, that doesn't really help us any. But sometimes there's an unknown, like if this 40 had been an x6. Uh, then we would need to encompass that in the equations by talking about amount entering the overall network and amount leaving the overall network. Uh, like I said, in this case, we don't need that particular equation. Um, so really, we've got the linear equations. Uh, we'll probably need to put them in better linear algebra formats, right? So um, I'll say for this first one, x1 plus x2 equals negative 200. Uh, for the next one, it'll be x1 uh, minus x3 equals 40. I'm using some spacing here to keep my variables lined up. You don't have to do that, but it's helpful when you actually write down the matrix. Uh, the next one, x2 plus x3 minus x5 equals 100. And the last one is x4 plus x5 uh, equals 60. So that's more of the form where we're ready to write an augmented matrix and dump it into a calculator. So the first row, uh, 1, 1, 
zero, 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 negative 200, one, zero, negative one, zero, zero, 40, um, zero, one, one, zero, negative one, 100, and zero, 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 one, one, 60. Okay, so that's what we'd want to dump into a matrix calculator and uh, reduce and see if we can solve the system. Um, I've done that already. I have to say this is one advantage of teaching linear algebra online. Is normally when I'm teaching this in the classroom, you all are sitting there watching me trying to type this into a calculator and just having fun when I make a typo and I don't even know it and I just keep going and nobody tells me until a couple minutes later. Um, so I get to avoid all that. I've double checked this for typos already. Um, so the reduced system here, just translate that back into x's and equal signs. Uh, so the first row, let's say x1, I'm going to go ahead and move the x3 to the other side. So x1 equals x3 plus 40. And I'm noticing there's two free variables here. Uh, there's pivots in x1, x2, and x4. Um, well, yeah, let's let's keep going. I'll just, I'll just, we'll see why I'm writing x3 in a little space before uh, the constants. Okay, so next row x2 equals negative x3 plus 160. Uh, there's no pivot in the x3 column, so the next one I'm going to write down is going to be x4, but since we're skipping over it, since it's a free variable, I'll go ahead and write x3 equals x3. Uh, the next one says x4 equals negative x5 plus 60. And the last one's a little interesting here. It says um, negative x5 equals negative 60. And this is my first time I'm not really happy with the calculator I'm using because I would like it to have multiplied that row by negative 1 to have gotten x5 equals 60. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, x5 equals 60. Boom. Okay, um, there we go. Since we have a hard and fast number for x5, uh, that'll give me a hard and fast number for x4 as well. Uh, if x5 has to be 60, then plugging that in here negative 60 plus 60 means that x4 has to be 0. So let's see, where can I put my solution vector? So 60, 0. Um, x3 has no restraints on it, although I'm assuming we don't want negative flow here. So I'd say the smallest x3 could be, be 0. And looking at x2, x2 is negative x3 plus 160. Uh, so I'm assuming the biggest that x3 should be, could be, uh, would be 160. If it's bigger than that, then x2 is going negative. Um, and then x1 just needs to be 40 more than whatever we pick for x3. So one possible solution would be to say if there's no flow at x3, so let's pick x3 to be 0 which would mean x2 would be 160 and x1 would be 40. So that, I should say that's if x3 equals 0. I could pick any number for x3 between 0 and 160 and get a solution that would balance this network. Uh, let's just make sure that this actually seems like it's working um, let's say if x1 is 40, um, so we've got 40 flowing into b, and there's 40 flowing out of b right there, which means x3 had better be, there's nothing left <laughs> to flow out x3, so x3 better be 0, which it is. Um, if x2 is 160, that says out of these 200 people, 40 of them went there, 160 of them went there, yeah, that seems right. And when 160 come in here and 0 come in here, 
100 of them go out there, which means 60 of them had better be going there. And X5, that looks right. Um, so, and and all of those 60 go out here. So there's none coming in here at X4, which is zero. I think we have a pretty good solution. Uh, it, it'd be interesting to say, what if X3 is 100? Recompute these numbers and look back at the network and make sure that everything still works. Uh, but we do have another solution there uh, with X3 equals 100. So uh, there are multiple solutions, although um, there are multiple values that don't work as well. Not every value is a solution. Okay, so there's two network flow problems in your homework. Uh, the last two is to go ahead and tackle those, and then you'll be done.